Antonio starts right now. Making headlines this morning, the number of deaths due to COVID-19 continues to climb here in Bear County. More on the newest numbers and what the mayor is saying about Easter weekend. And taking a look outside with live cam. No rain this morning. Is that going to hold through for the whole day? We're going to check in with Mike and find out. Feels nice out there today. Good morning, everybody. It is Friday. It is April 10th. Did we get those big storms yesterday? I didn't notice them. We did. They were kind of here and there, and some of them did get pretty uh, vocal, didn't they, Mike? Yes, uh, we had a few severe uh, reports in the Hill Country, and then they shifted off to the east and the southeast, and there were about a dozen, half dozen or so severe storm uh, warnings that were posted. I think I just slept through everything. Yeah, and we got some decent rain at our house. The airport didn't pick up anything, so it was not as widespread as expected. We do have a couple of showers out there, and yes, as they were talking about, it is much more pleasant uh, this morning because a bit of a front worked its way on through here. So we got a couple of these uh, little bit of uh, showers that are sliding in from the hill country right now, sort of the leftovers, a little bit of rain well down to the uh, southeast as well. 67 degrees, so we're still well above normal, but a whole lot better than where we have been the past couple of mornings when we've been staying in the low 70s around here and oak is on the high side mold did drop down yesterday as far as the rest of today you're going to be at uh, 68 degrees i think we dropped down a few more notches because we've got some uh, 50s and portions of the hill country right now so we'll drop down low 60s come back up 68 at noon 72 for a high temperature maybe a couple of showers kind of doubt it today now tonight especially off to the west, we'll have more showers and thunderstorms. And there's actually uh, the risk for a couple of stronger, potentially severe storms well out to the west later on tonight. Rain chances come back up tomorrow, maybe some more strong to potentially severe storms. And then we're still looking at a great, great Easter Sunday. Details on that coming up in a couple of minutes. Time saver traffic right now on this Good Friday. Here's Officer Nick Solis. Hey, good morning, Mike. Good morning, everyone. Hope you're having a great start to your Friday morning. All right, we have no accidents, but a little bit of construction here. 10 at the Y. This is if you're coming 35 southbound to get back onto 10 westbound here. Looks like there was an accident earlier in the night, and now they have, uh, they're doing some maintenance on this westbound lane here at I-10. Just keep that in mind if you're heading that way. Hopefully it gets cleared up pretty soon. Other than that, there's really nothing else going on. I hope you all have a great morning. Mark Leslie, back to you. You as well. Thank you, Nick. As we move into the holiday weekend, the message right now from Mayor Ron Nirenberg. Love your family from a distance. That says the uh, city council decided to extend the stay home work safe order through April 30th. Now he says you should only gather with members in your household as you celebrate Passover or Easter. Instead, visit virtually with friends and extended family members, whether it's by phone or computer. Here's a look at the latest numbers for you. We have a total of 615 COVID-19 cases in Bear County. That's an increase of 61 cases since the last time. Out of those 615 of those tests came back positive. 22 patients have now died. 92 have recovered and 85 remain in the hospital this morning. More than half of those are in intensive care. Five officers with the San Antonio Police Department and at least four employees with the Bear County Sheriff's Office have tested positive. We also know five HEB employees who contracted COVID-19. All stores have been disinfected. We're also learning that more patients from the Southeast Nursing and Rehabilitation Center are being sent to the hospital. It's that same facility where a COVID-19 outbreak took place. Ten residents now hospitalized with four on ventilators. The death toll from the center remains at 10. The nursing facility says they still don't know how or when COVID-19 got on site. They say they are taking measures to care for each person in the facility. In a statement, they go on to say, quote, we are hopeful this situation serves as a cautionary notice to all senior living and rehabilitation centers. COVID-19 is an evil and fast enemy. Be prepared, end quote. Well, hopeful signs are emerging despite a surge in virus deaths. New York City is reporting its lowest daily number of hospital admissions so far. But amid the cautious optimism is the stunning new death toll. More than 16,000 Americans have now died. And here in Texas, with just over 200 deaths, officials are preparing for a possible surge in cases. ABC's Kenneth Moten has the latest. Mental this morning, President Trump is assuring Americans the curve could be flattening. We're at the top of the hill, pretty sure we're at the top of the hill, and now we're going uh, downward. In some cases, we've already started that process. The message comes as New York State reports a record 799 coronavirus deaths in one day. That is so shocking and painful and breathtaking. I can't, I don't even have the words for it. 
New York's governor says the hospitalization rate is dropping, but more people in the hospital since earlier in the outbreak are dying. And now new questions are being raised about how and when we can ease social distancing. President Trump says widespread nationwide testing for the virus will not be necessary, something health officials have said is key to reopening the country. Do you need it? No. Is it a nice thing to do? Yes. Uh, we're talking about 325 million people, uh, and that's not going to happen, as you can imagine. And no, it would never happen with anyone else either. Many Americans are eager to plan summer vacations. Dr. Anthony Fauci is cautiously optimistic. We have to be prepared that when the infections start to rear their heads again, that we have in place a very aggressive an effective way to identify, isolate, contact, trace, and make sure we don't have those spikes that we've seen now. So the answer to your question is yes, if we do the things that we need to do to prevent the resurgence. Experts say life in America won't return to normal until a vaccine is developed, which could be 18 months away. But now Pfizer says it's working on a promising vaccine that could stop the virus from replicating. It could be ready by the end of this year. Kenneth Moten, ABC News, New York. Now to the latest on a gas line explosion that caused an evacuation last night in East Bear County. The Bear County Fire Marshal's office is investigating after lightning struck the gas line in the area. This is off Highway 81 and Loop 1604. About 100 residents who live in homes within two miles of the explosion were evacuated until authorities took care of the incident, which did happen about 630 last night. Deputies shut down traffic in the area as crews worked. The lanes were reopened after 10 p.m. No injuries or fatalities have been reported in connection with that explosion. Right now, we're just about 437, 67 degrees. Still ahead, more and more people are using curbside pickup for groceries and other things. But is it really much safer? We're going to take a closer look. And next, why leading economists say the U.S. is already in a recession, thanks in part to the coronavirus pandemic. And live cam giving us a look outside. It's Good Friday, everybody. So happy to have you with us. Mike has an Easter forecast coming up. Four forty. Welcome back to GMSA. In your morning headlines. Dozens of economists say there's no need to worry about an upcoming recession. They think it's already here. Forty five economists said in a new survey that the U.S. is already in an economic downturn. They say we should stay in it for the first half of the year. The survey points to the pandemic as the primary problem. Of course, it predicts a spike in unemployment, a decline in spending and a dip in the growth rate. Still, the economists are optimistic the economy will bounce back in the second half of the year. But they point out that it may need assistance from a federal stimulus package. Landmarks across the U.S. were lit up in blue last night. Buildings like the One World Trade Center in New York switched the colors of their lights for the evening. The display was part of the Light in Blue campaign to honor essential workers on the front lines of the coronavirus pandemic. It was a show of support, not just for those working tirelessly in hospitals, but also grocery stores and other businesses. More than 100 U.S. landmarks and electronic signs took part in the campaign. Prosecutors pushing back in against an effort to dismiss charges against dozens of people in that college admission scandal, including actress Lori Loughlin. Lachlan and her fashion designer husband are facing conspiracy and fraud charges for allegedly paying half a million dollars to get their two daughters into Stanford. In court documents, prosecutors explained why they were late disclosing some of their notes to defense attorneys. They also argued the delay did not harm the defense's case, saying that the trial is still months away. It's not scheduled to start until October. 441, 67 degrees. Coming up next, why some say several local arts programs might not make it through the pandemic and why they're counting on the community to save them. 444. More Americans are using curbside pickup for groceries and supplies, but is it safe? ABC's Becky Worley has details in your GMA First Look. In this morning's GMA First Look, the do's and don'ts of curbside pickup. For so many Americans, this has become the go-to method for stocking up on groceries and supplies, but there are some helpful strategies you should consider. Would you mind putting it in the back for me? Thank you. 
There are lots of different stores that are doing it now as our entire sort of shopping habits change. Retail outlets and grocery stores are ramping up, order online, then pick up outside the store. Sometimes you need to go to an outside kiosk, but in many cases, you never need to leave your car. Big retail chains like Kohl's, Best Buy, and Michael's have added options, as have local stores and restaurants. Coming up on Good Morning America, we'll give you much more of the expert tips you need to know. With your GMA First Look, I'm Becky Worley, ABC News, Oakland. Yeah, I had to pick up something at Best Buy the other day, and I have a pickup truck, so it didn't go in the bed. And I said, just put it in the right rear passenger seat. And I just opened up the window. They walked around, laid it right in the seat. All done. That's good. Contactless. Mm -hmm. Local arts programs, among those that may not survive the pandemic, the city of San Antonio says it has to cut funding to dozens of area arts programs through the remainder of the fiscal year. The San Antonio Symphony, which has been struggling to turn around its financial troubles, says it's counting on its loyal audience. Patty Santos has that story. We're all in this together. And I think people are going to need the arts when we come through. I think people need the arts right now. Mary Ellen Gore, principal second violin with the San Antonio Symphony, says the agency was bracing for a pandemic impact. I am not going to say that this is happy news, but I can't really say it's entirely unexpected either. A shortfall in the hotel occupancy tax means 37 funded art programs won't get any more funding beyond April. The new fiscal year starts in October and future funding is still in limbo. We're keeping our finger on the pulse, um, but uh, we just we won't know until we get a little bit further into it because the city collects revenue in arrears. The stay at home order forced the symphony to cancel the rest of the season. The symphony has proactive leadership right now. I have full confidence that they are working hard to find uh, perhaps solutions to this, alternate sources of revenue. The executive director for the symphony tells us they're losing out on about $90,000 in city funds. The symphony's total budget for the current season is $7.7 .7 million. Quote, the unprecedented drop and the resulting impact on the city's budget for arts funding do not help the financial turnaround of the symphony. The statement continued saying that the most important thing is the health and safety of the community. Some good news, about 75% of the 1,800 ticket holders have chosen to donate the ticket sales for the canceled season back to the symphony. The main goal right now is that when this crisis is behind us, we have a healthy symphony on stage and a healthy audience in the house. Members look forward to putting on a show. That was Patty Santos reporting. Oh, we're all going to get through this. We are, and we need our symphony to stay healthy. Yeah, the arts are very important. Yep. Let's check on the roadways and see if there are any traffic trouble spots. I saw a trans guy thing about that ramp to I-10 from I-35 closed this morning. Is it still closed? Yeah, it's still closed. Pretty much the only thing that's closed out there and uh, pretty much every, that's, that's it. No accidents right now. Roadways still might be a little slick, so just be careful when you're driving to work today uh, because we want, we want to make sure you're getting there safely, all right? Uh, so just keep that in mind. Let's take a look at other parts in the city. 10 and Callan looking good. 10 and Frio inbound and outbound. Very little traffic there. So that's looking great. Let's see. We also have uh, 10 and Frio doesn't want to move. All right. Well, there we go. 281 and winding way. No cars on the roadway there. That's looking great as well. And uh, pretty much traffic. 410 in Fredericksburg. The same. Looking good. Just get to work safely. And like I said, keep in mind that it might be slick out there. So watch your speed. Thank you, Nick. Our storms may not have been as quite as widespread yesterday, but they did pack a bit of a punch, Mike. Yeah, as expected, most of them did start to pop up really uh, in some of our uh, eastern counties and mm -hmm. over toward the southeast. And there were a few big ones uh, in portions of the hill country yesterday. A big one started to develop in Medina County. Got some decent rain in my house, but then the airport picked up nothing. Wow. Yeah. Always we did have some, depends. Yeah, we did have some high winds, though, and uh, there was a, a little bit of damage to this tree limb being knocked down over there in Brenham, but thank you very much for the uh, KSAC Connect picture. Appreciate that. And that's the, the great thing with the, you know, KSAC Connect. Whenever there is weather to talk about other than just the pretty pictures that we like to show, we love those also, but this is a, a great thing. So thank you very much for that. And uh, could have a couple more rounds of potentially severe weather. One tonight way out west, one tomorrow. So remember the KSAT weather app. 
That's where at the very bottom you can put the uh, KSAT Connect pictures in there. There's a little area for that and then also you'll get all the updates and check out radar, everything like that. All right, this morning it's a lot clearer. Now we do have clouds, but I'm talking about down here at the surface a lot clearer. We don't have nowhere near the humidity what we've had the past few days. 67 in town, 64 in Balverde. We're still on the above normal side. Normal high is, excuse me, normal low is in the upper 50s right now, so still about uh, 10 degrees above normal. Still got a couple of uh, little light showers that are sliding on through the area right now. So maybe one or two of them this morning. I can't completely rule something out uh, later on today, but really wouldn't count on it. Going back 12 hours, and as you can see, some of these storms that did pop up right there, that one in Medina County right there, and then off to the east, we had some uh, bigger storms, but it was not um, quite the severe outbreak that it had looked like it was going to be, which I don't think anybody's complaining about that. Now, throughout the rest of today, I think this computer model kind of overdoes it a bit as far as rain. We'll still have a couple of showers out there. I think it's just a little bit of a broad brush. And then, uh, you know, one or two of them are possible today. Now, tonight, and this model brings it in a little bit later, but there's the chance for a couple of stronger cells to develop well out to the west. And that will move through in the overnight hours. It may be kind of a rough morning tomorrow. And mid morning hours, uh, rain tends to ease up just a little bit. And then there's a chance for another line of storms to come in late tomorrow and maybe even into the wee hours of Sunday morning, early, early Sunday morning. Now, after that, that's all going to be clearing out. So Storm Pr Prediction Center does have the marginal risk for a severe storm later on tonight out in western counties. And then tomorrow, once again, they put in the enhanced risk for a few of those uh, severe storms. And this would be late tomorrow because we'll, we'll get a lot more kind of warm, moist, and unstable air moving on in here. And so that's why that enhanced risk for a uh, severe storm late tomorrow. Like I said, after that, looks fantastic. Noon today, 68 degrees. So I think we dropped down a little bit more this morning, come back up to 68. Lots of clouds around here. Maybe a shower. Um, kind of doubt it. And then the chance for some storms to develop later on tonight. Then tomorrow we'll have some rain and maybe some uh, severe storms late in the day and tomorrow night. Sunday, Easter Sunday, after early, early morning rain, probably before everybody's up and a couple of clouds in the morning, then sunshine and 80. But it's going to be very pleasant out there. The next big front moves through, knocks us down to 62 Monday. And we're going to be staying kind of on the cooler side. Good chunk of next week. Uh, we're look, still looking forward to those comfortable temperatures. Yeah, and it's fairly comfortable out there this morning. Mm -hmm. too. Yeah, not bad at all. Big yeah. improvement, yeah. that's for sure. Thanks. Hey, thanks, Mike. 452, 67 degrees. Coming up next, popular TV celebrity hosts and journalists are sharing their experiences working from home during COVID-19, how they're keeping connected to their audiences. Five till several TV talk show hosts and journalists are sharing what it's like to broadcast from their own home. For the latest on what's happening in Hollywood, here's ABC's Jason Nathanson. A major milestone today in the movie world. The first major studio film skipping the box office and going straight to streaming. There are other kinds of trolls. Trolls World Tour is available for rental Friday. It's an experiment by Universal in a time when most studios so far have chosen to postpone releases, waiting for theaters to reopen. The first Trolls movie made almost $350 million worldwide. The industry will be closely watching Trolls World Tour to see if at-home audiences bite or not. What's it like working from home when that requires you to be on TV. ABC's Sarah Haynes is sharing her setup and says getting it done while also juggling three kids with her husband meant telling her bosses. I will look presentable and I will not insult you by wearing again that one and a half outfits from my weekend of past days, but I will not look beautiful and I will not be dressed up. <laughs> Haynes' weekday show, Strahan, Sarah, and Kiki is on hiatus, and she's been appearing on Good Morning America and The View. You can expect a new Saturday Night Live this weekend. NBC says the sketch show will return with original content April 11th, but no real details on what that means. Will there be a host, a musical guest, sketches? A weekend update segment is likely, but otherwise the shape of the show is unclear. And the force is with Daisy Ridley. Today, it's her birthday. The Star Wars star is 28, while This Is Us star Mandy Moore is 36. And that's what's happening in Hollywood. I'm Jason Athenson, ABC News, Los Angeles. 456, 67 degrees. Still ahead in our next half hour, the city of San Antonio is extending its stay home, work safe order. More on that and an update expected today from Governor Greg Abbott.
Plus, video conferencing program Zoom has gotten to be a popular app for social distancing, and now even some of the NCAA mascots are getting together. We'll show you why ahead in Tech Bites. Live from Case at 12, Good Morning San Antonio starts right now. Making headlines this hour as we head into Easter weekend, Governor Greg Abbott is set to give an important update on the coronavirus situation here in the Lone Star State. Plus, the San Antonio City Council approves extension of the stay home, work safe order. It could affect your travel plans a little bit longer. And outside with live cam on your Good Friday, feeling a little bit more comfortable out there. And we have showers and thunderstorms in the area. Do we have any rain out there this morning? We'll talk to Mike coming up. Good morning, everybody. It is Friday. It is April 10th. Thank you so much for being with us this morning, everybody. We did get those storms last night. Let's see how your weekend's going to turn out on this Good Friday. And of course, we have Easter coming up in just a couple days. Mike? Yeah, let's jump ahead to Easter. And once again, it is still looking absolutely fantastic. There may be a few lingering showers early, early on Easter Sunday morning. But after that, it's going to be actually the start of a stretch of beautiful weather. Now this morning, it is much more comfortable out there. Temperatures have dropped down considerably compared to the past couple days. We're still about 10 above normal, but it sure beats where we have been. And look at those 50s up in portions of the hill country. And I think that cooler air is going to continue to come on in here because the wind is out of the north at 12 miles per hour. So we'll drop down a few more degrees this morning. Visibility is good. And we do still have a couple of showers that are showing up on radar right now. Not a lot, just a sprinkle here or there. Maybe uh, one or two of them trying to get into the western portion of Bear County. I don't think this is going to be a big deal, but if you are hitting the roads this morning, I know a lot of people, obviously a lot of folks are off, but then those that have been working are off for the Good Friday holiday today. And uh, just one or two of those little sprinkly showers out there. 61 up the road toward Bernie Stage. Like I said, 50s up in the hill country. So I think this uh, somewhat cooler air continues to come on in here. Oak is still on the high side. It did go down from the previous day's reading. Mold also dropped down and just a little bit of uh, pecan is showing up. So maybe a couple of showers around here today. Um, cooler temperatures just compared to where we have been. Obviously, it's still on the above normal side, but then later on this afternoon, yes, we are going to be on the cool side of things. Only low 70s can't completely rule out a shower today, and then a few thunderstorms are going to get going out to the west, and they could be on the stronger side later on tonight out west. More showers and storms tomorrow may be severe, especially late tomorrow, and then like I said, Easter looks fantastic. Some uh, leftover clouds in the morning, beautiful, and that's the start of a nice period, which includes some cold Colder temp. I'll, I'll use the word colder, colder on Monday because we'll be down in the 40s starting off next week. Details coming up. Time saver traffic right now. Here's Officer Nick Solis. Anything going on? Uh, not much, Mike. Just still working on the one uh, exit closure we have. This is going to be if you're coming 35 southbound to get on to 10 westbound, they have that entry wrap closed off. It's been closed off. Uh, for a, about four hours now due to an accident earlier in the night. So hopefully they can get this opened up here pretty soon. Looks like they do have one lane still opened up there, but here it is. There's that entry. So that's 35 that turns in. That's 35 southbound that turns into 10 westbound there. Just keep that in mind. If you're heading that way, slow down when you see those uh, construction vehicles. Uh, we just want to make sure everyone's safe. And if you are driving on the roadway today, it still can be a little slick from yesterday's rain. Just please be careful. Use caution. Drive the speed limit. We want everyone to get to work safely. All right, well, that's about it. Hope everyone has a great morning. Mark Leslie, back to you. Thank you, Nick. Today, Governor Greg Abbott set to give another update on the coronavirus situation here in Texas. He, along with several state health experts, will be speaking at 2 p.m. in Austin. We will have live updates later today on KSAT and KSAT.com. Meanwhile, the City Council here has approved an extension on the Stay Home Work Safe order. It will now run through the end of April. While there was a majority vote, it was not unanimous. District 7 Councilwoman Anna Sandoval was the only one to vote against it. She told reporters afterward that she supports the order, but she wanted to draw attention to other issues she thinks need to be considered, like testing. In less than a month, San Antonians were set to vote on extending the eighth of a cent sales tax to funds pre-K for SA. Well, now City Council has voted to move that election back to November 3rd because of the pandemic. The program offers free and reduced price pre-kindergarten education here in San Antonio. Voters will decide whether to fund the program for eight more years. Pre-K for SA CEO Sarah Berry says she expects more children to qualify for the program after COVID-19 due to a spike in unemployment. The pandemic is creating one of the qualification metrics is income pre K for SA runs four centers across the city it serves about 2000 students every school year. 
Meanwhile, UTSA is working to find new ways to combat COVID-19, and it could mean a potential treatment that would reduce symptoms brought on by the virus. Now, this week, the university announced that roughly 250 unique compounds developed by chemistry professor Doug Franz and his students are being studied at the University of Texas Medical Branch at Galveston. Two immunosuppressant drugs used to treat and prevent malaria were found in the compound. And the studies have shown it could also reduce the effects of COVID-19. These are compounds that are very similar in chemical makeup to the hydroxychloroquine and chloroquine that we obviously all are very familiar with at this point. Brown says the goal is to develop a treatment similar to Tamiflu. However, he says research is still in the early stage and it could be another five to eight years before people would be able to use it. KSAT.com has you covered all the latest coronavirus news. Also created uh, putting together uh, other stories that give you tips on how to handle unwanted stress right now. There are also ideas on what to do with your kids this Easter and answers the quest to questions of why is the toilet paper not available? Uh, that's the big question we all want to know. Eric Hernandez gives us a look at what you might have missed on the website this week as well. Stimulus checks are set to hit bank accounts by the end of this week or early next week. But if you're one of the 10 million people who will get their check by snail mail, you'll probably want to know when it's coming. The U.S. Postal Service is offering a free service called Informed Deliver. You will be emailed a grayscale photo of each letter size piece of mail that will be delivered to your mailbox each day. If you get a picture of an IRS envelope, it's likely your check. KSAT.com has a link on where to sign up. The new coronavirus pandemic has brought about an uneasy shift in our normal lives and can be causing some unwanted stress and anxiety. Psychiatrist Dr. Harry Croft this week offered some tips to help us all out. We have that list up in this article, but overall he says we should try to focus on the bright side of the situation by making the most of the extra family time we are all getting together. Some of that unwanted stress right now may be caused by not being able to find toilet paper. Where is all the toilet paper and when will it be restocked? The answer, not that simple. Our RJ Marquez explains that even before the panic buying began, Americans use more toilet paper than any other country and the massive demand now is making it harder to keep in stock. There is a silver lining, you can read all about it when you click on this article. And finally, Easter is Sunday, and this year the kids won't be able to participate in an egg hunt with other friends and family, but they can take part in a neighborhood egg hunt that is social distancing approved. How it works? You color and decorate a printed out egg and then put them up in your windows. You can walk or drive around to hunt for all the eggs you can find. For more on all these stories, just head to our website, ksat.com. Erica Devnandis, KSAT 12 News. Now, just about eight minutes past the hour, 67 degrees. Still ahead, if you use facial recognition to unlock your smartphone, it might not recognize you with the mask. More on how to make it work properly on your iPhone. And next for all the Tiger King fans out there, one more episode is on the way. More on what you can expect coming up. And taking a look outside once again with live cam, we have some wet spots on the road left over from last night. So please be careful if you do have to head out. Welcome back, everyone. It's 11 minutes after 5. In your morning consumer headlines, some financial analysts think AMC theaters will likely file for bankruptcy. The world's largest movie theater chain was already struggling before the coronavirus outbreak. AMC's theaters have been closed since March 16th. Some Wall Street analysts believe the earliest the chain could reopen would be August. They estimate AMC would be completely out of money by then. The analysts say the company probably has enough money to survive through June or July, but no further. It can be tough to get a delivery window for groceries these days, so some people are luring shoppers by offering big tips. But Instacart workers say some users are then lowering or entirely removing that tip after their orders are delivered. Shoppers can see information like items requested, store location, and tip before accepting orders. The company says it has removed the option to select no tip. However, users can still manually type in $0. Instacart officials say lowering tips after delivery is rare and most users adjust tips upward or don't change it at all. Still, some shoppers say they're now avoiding orders, offering tips that seem too high. You know what I noticed big time on that story? There was toilet paper aisles filled with toilet paper. Really? Yes. That must be old video. 
Well, good news. More Tiger King is on the way. Netflix is bringing back the widely talked about docuseries for one more episode with a special host, comedian Joel McHale. The eighth episode of the show titled The Tiger King and I <laughs> will start streaming April 12th. Nielsen says the series got 34 million unique views in the first 10 days of its release in the United States. I alone. wondered what the heck we were doing showing video of Joel McHale all dooted up now like we the know. Tiger King. Yeah. That's why. 513, 67 degrees. Still ahead, popular recording artists are being inspired by fans all across the globe dealing with COVID-19 through music. Plus how you can make your iPhone's facial recognition function work correctly even while you're wearing a mask out in public. Please listen, this is important. Anyone can be affected by the prescription opioid crisis. If you think you've been hurt by Purdue or its prescription opioids like OxyContin, you may be entitled to compensation as part of Purdue's bankruptcy, but you have to file a claim. It can be filed by you, a legal guardian, by survivors or relatives of people who have died or are disabled. The deadline to file is June 30, 2020. For more information, visit PurduePharmaClaims.com. Stop dancing around the pain that keeps you up again and again. Advil PM silences pain, and you sleep the whole night. Advil PM. My gums are irritated. I don't have to worry about that. Do I? Harmful bacteria lurk just below the gum line. Crest Gum Detoxify, voted product of the year. It works below the gum line to neutralize harmful plaque bacteria and help reverse early gum damage. Gum Detoxify from Crest. Five sixteen. Many iPhone users are realizing facial recognition software doesn't work while you're wearing a mask, but there is a way around it. ABC's Kenneth Moten has details in this morning's Tech Bytes. In today's Tech Bytes, the facial recognition fix. iPhone users have likely noticed by now the phone's facial recognition will not work while wearing a mask. But there is a little known fix. Under settings, you can set an alternate appearance and face ID. Facebook is now offering a new feature to users who are concerned they're spending too much time on social media. It's called Quiet Mode. It will allow users to turn off notifications while working from home during the coronavirus pandemic. And this Zoom chat was for the dogs. Four-legged college mascots had a little FaceTime led by Bryant University's Tupper II. Joining him were his counterparts from at least nine other schools. With sports canceled, they've had a little extra time on their hands or should I say pause? Those are Tech Bites. Have a good Easter weekend. What do you say we check the roadways? Let's do that at 517. Here is Officer Nick Solis. Hey, good morning, everyone. All right, so we do have one accident right now we're working on. Let's get to that. It's going to be right here. It's going to be southbound um, IH-10 West clover leaf onto uh, North Loop 1604 eastbound, you know, where it has all those, those four clovers there kind of gets confusing when you're driving all those all those directions. Well, it's right there. So just it looks like a vehicle, one vehicle accident that went into the ditch. It just shouldn't cause any traffic buildup. Looks like it's going to get wreckers on scene and it should be getting cleared up pretty soon. So this is the only accident we're working on right now. Still working on this lane closure here, the I-10 at the Y when you're going 35 south to I-10 westbound. Um, so we're just working there. So here it is. Looks like those construction lights are off. Be careful if you're heading that way. Don't want to make sure uh, want to make sure they're safe, but it looks like they might be wrapping this construction up pretty soon, hopefully, so uh, it doesn't cause any uh, delays there. Other than that, things are looking really good all around the city, and uh, please get to work safely. Thank you, Nick. If you have to go to work. If you have to go to work. <laughs> work. Well, and actually, uh, it's Good Friday, so I know a lot of places are closed anyway. Even if you were an essential worker, a lot of places are still closed. That's yep. right. And it's going to be, as we've been talking about, a fantastic Easter Sunday. It's going to be mm -hmm. beautiful out there. This morning is a lot more pleasant, too, because we did have a bit of a front move through last night. You can night. feel it. Yeah, uh, the humidity is down considerably. And even though uh, it may not have been as widespread of an outbreak of strong to potentially severe storms yesterday, we did have a few uh, doozies out there. And wow, it's a great picture. Thank you very much for that KSAC Connect picture. We've got, obviously, clear view out there. We don't have that haze hanging around because because the humidity has dropped down so much. 67 in town, 64 Bull Verde. Temperatures are still about 10 degrees above normal. And I think some of this cooler air with those 50s will continue to work its way on in here throughout the course of the morning. So going for low 60s 
once it's all said and done this morning, and then we're not going to rebound all that much throughout the day. A couple little sprinkly showers are showing up on radar right now. That's about the extent of it. There could be one or two showers out there uh, throughout the rest of today. This computer model, <clears throat> excuse me, has a couple of them just sort of scattered about in the morning hours and uh, not much in the afternoon. Now tonight, though, it does look like there are going to be some more thunderstorms trying to get going out here to the west. And so that's why there is the uh, very small chance for a sphere storm well out to the west later on tonight. Now, different computer model and going into the early morning hours tomorrow, this has some of those storms holding together in the overnight hours and moving through tomorrow morning early, cutting across the area. And then we'll just have some scattered rain uh, throughout the day. And then another round of showers and some pretty hefty thunderstorms later on tomorrow night and in the wee hours of Sunday morning. And that's when some of those late tomorrow night could be on the strong to potentially severe side. So Storm Prediction Center once again has the, the marginal risk. That's kind of the, the lowest end of the scale, but still that chance for a strong to severe storm in our western counties. And this would be later on tonight, basically. And then tomorrow, again, the timing of it would be pretty much in the uh, late hours of uh, tomorrow evening. And that's got us up to the enhanced risk again. So that's... Uh, where we were yesterday for some of our eastern counties as far as the enhanced risk for some of those stronger storms. And then that's going to be clearing on out. Like I said, Easter looks absolutely fantastic. Today, 68 at noon, so I think we drop down a few more degrees, come back up. Cloudy skies, yeah, mention of a shower. Very unlikely, though, 72 for a high temperature. So on the below normal side, wind out of the northeast at about 10 to 15 miles per hour. So it's going to be a pleasant day. Tomorrow, we get back up into the 70s. We've got kind of a warm front moving back on through here. So that brings that warm, humid, unstable air back on in here. And maybe some strong storms tomorrow, especially late. And then after some morning clouds and early, early morning rain, Beautiful on Sunday. Big front comes in here for the first of next week down to 62 on Monday. Unbelievable. I love that. Thank yeah. you. Hey, we like your pastel tie and pocket square this morning. Very Easter-ish. It's my pink Easter egg. You don't have Easter bunnies for your... I don't have Easter bunny cufflinks, no. They're just, they're they're kind of green. Not yet. I have to work on that. I know. We've got some time. For next year? Yeah. yeah. 521, 67 degrees. Coming up next in your morning spotlight, three ways that the music world is responding to help those affected by the COVID-19 crisis. Big three numbers, 388, Fireball 3, Daily 4, 3014, Fireball 9. And your cash five numbers, 418, 28, 30, 34. Texas two-step, 4, 5, 19, 28, with that bonus ball of 32. Perhaps no artistic medium responds more immediately or evocatively to social change than music. CNN's David Daniel has three examples of how the music world is reacted to, reacting rather to the COVID-19 crisis in your Hollywood Minute. A unique Easter Sunday performance. Italian tenor Andrea Bocelli will perform Ave Maria and other sacred songs from the empty Duomo Cathedral in Milan, accompanied only by the cathedral organist. The legendary singer, who will be performing for free, says he hopes his music will offer healing and hope to millions. His foundation has raised more than $140,000 for hospitals in Italy, which has been hit particularly hard by the coronavirus. Sunday's concert is at 1 p.m. Eastern on Bocelli's YouTube channel. Neil Young has released an update to Shut It Down, his 2019 song with Crazy Horse. The video for Shut It Down 2020 shows people reacting, or not, to the threat of the coronavirus. Young says he was inspired by fans who wrote him that they'd found new meaning in the song while dealing with the current crisis. A Kenny Rogers tribute recorded in social isolation. Lady Antebellum paid homage to Rogers, who died March 20th, with this Islands in the Stream cover for a CMT special honoring Rogers and raising money for COVID-19 relief. You'll find the video on CMT's YouTube page, along with a donation link. In Hollywood, I'm David Daniel. Still can't believe Kenny Rogers is gone. I know, I can't either. Gosh, I just, we grew up listening to him. I he inspired know. us so much.
Right now it is just about 527, 67 degrees. Still ahead in our next half hour, the pandemic has left the Bear County Courthouse looking more like a ghost town. More on what's next for things like jury duty and jury trials. Well, it appears the United States is making progress in slowing the spread of the coronavirus, but some health experts say we are not quite out of the woods just yet. And Selena, considered by some to be the most celebrated Mexican-American artist and a cultural icon. We have a preview of our Sunday special. Good morning to you. It is Friday, April 10th. Thanks for being with us this morning, everybody. I had rain last night. Airport didn't register any, but some people got a ton. And Mike says there's a scattered shower or two out there this morning. Yeah, a couple leftovers. I, I was fortunate to, to get some rain at my house yesterday, and there is still more rain in the forecast, even though today it's going to be uh, not that much. One or two sprinkles out there, as Leslie was just talking about. Uh, notice how clear, though, it looks, especially down here at the surface. We still have a lot of clouds hanging around here. And here's those few little uh, light showers that we were talking about. So one or two of these uh, throughout the rest of the morning and even uh, this afternoon noon showers possible. Now temperatures are still 10 degrees above normal 67 here in town it should be in the upper 50s, but it feels so much more comfortable than yesterday in the past couple of days because we've gotten rid of a lot of the humidity after that front moved through last night that was associated with some of those stronger storms that moved on through here. Still have a lot of oak. These are yesterday's readings. Of course, molds on the moderate side. The updated count will come out in about a um, couple of hours or so throughout the rest of today. I think we drop down into the low 60s with some of that cooler air coming in here because we've got some northerly breezes out there. We'll be at 68 at noon, 72 for high temperature. I don't have the mention of a shower on here, but I guess you can't really rule one out. And then later on tonight, we're going to see some showers and storms redevelop well out to the west, and there's the chance for some of those to once again become strong and or severe. And we do have another risk for severe weather late tomorrow as temperatures and the humidity kind of come back up a little bit. And then Easter Sunday still looks fantastic. Details on that coming up in a couple of minutes. Time saver traffic right now. Here's Officer Nick Solis. Good morning. Uh, Is there anything big going on? Good morning, Mike. Good morning, everyone. No, just working on that one accident still. It's going to be 1604, uh, or I'm sorry, southbound IH-10 West at the Cloverleaf to 1604 eastbound. That's uh, so a one vehicle accident there in the ditch. Don't think it's going to cause a lot of traffic buildup. Record is on scene. This one should be getting cleared up up here any minute. All right, let's take a look at some drive times. If you're coming from the city of New Braunfels or on 35 to 1604, 16 minutes, and then from 1604 to downtown from there is only 12 minutes. So things are looking great. Great commute times. Taking a look outside at the trans guy 281 at the quarry looking good. 10 at Roland on the east side looking great. Very little traffic, so that's always good. 10 at Callahan traffic is flowing very smoothly and 10 at Frio inbounds and outbounds. That's ah, a good shot right there. Looking great. So I hope you all have a great morning and an even better day. Mark Leslie, back to you. You as well, Nick. Thank you, sir. An order has been extended that puts a moratorium on jury duty and jury trials here in Bear County. Paul Venema has more on the new date and what it means for trial dockets. Since March 13th, the seats here in the central jury room have been empty. That was when Administrative Judge Ron Runhell ordered that jury trial cease and jury duty suspended. That order now has been amended. I just filed an order that would extend the moratorium on jury trials and jury summons through May the 15th. However, that date, Ron Hell said, could change. That May 15th is not an absolute date where we're going to begin subsequent to that. That is just from now until then. That's another month where we're not going to call juries another month or we're not going to have any jury trials in Bear County. He said the 10 criminal district courts now have 80 more cases each than when the pandemic started. It's going to mean a lot more work when we come back, but we're, we're looking forward to doing that. Obviously, we would rather have extra work and not have to worry about these types of issues. The issue, this pandemic that has left this place looking more like a ghost town than a courthouse. Paul Venema, KSAT 12 News. The Food and Drug Administration has warned InfoWars founder Alex Jones to stop promoting unapproved coronavirus cures. The FDA has asked Jones to take down several products from his website. They include products called Super Blue Silver Immune Gargle, Super Silver Whitening Toothpaste, and Super Silver Wound Dressing Gel. The website advertises them as treatments and cures for COVID-19, but they are all unapproved new drugs that are sold in violation of FDA regulations. Jones has 48 hours to respond. If he doesn't, legal action could be taken.
The stock markets are closed today for Good Friday, but they did end on a good note this week. A new $2.3 trillion Federal Reserve program to support the economy through the pandemic raised stock prices. The real story, though, is the week at large. The S&P 500 had its best week since 1974, gaining more than 12 percent. The Dow gained even more, marking its best week since 2009. Don't let the numbers fool you too much, though. All three indices are still down significantly from their values just two months ago. Meanwhile, it appears the U.S. is making progress. In slowing the spread of the coronavirus, a top U.S. model shows fewer deaths by August than previously projected. Meanwhile, President Trump aides hope to reopen the country next month. As CNN's John Lawrence reports, some officials have lingering concerns. There are positive indications in the battle against the COVID-19 pandemic. Obviously, the deaths remain much higher than, than we would like to see. Um, but, but it remains the case that we are seeing uh, signs that we're starting to flatten the curve. Dr. Anthony Fauci, the director of the National Institute of Allergy and Infectious Diseases, says summer vacations are a possibility. But the head of the Centers for Disease Control and Prevention says even once the current pandemic eases, the U.S. can't be caught flat-footed in 2021. Get prepared for next year which will be another challenging time. Dr. Robert Redfield says he wants to improve early case indication, isolation of the sick, and contact tracing. I think we have to be direct and honest about it. Over the last 10, 20, 30 years, we've underinvested in public health in this nation. Uh, we're in the position now of uh, preparing uh, a, a significant expansion. The CDC has more than 500 of its people in all 50 states, and the agency is working to increase that number over time. Get prepared for next year which will be another challenging time, but I want to be able to have it so we respond to it next year with the fundamentals of public health. We don't have to go to the serious mitigation steps that were taken to get us under control today. I'm John Lawrence reporting. The pandemic has impacted many businesses here at home. We are documenting all the essential businesses that are still open. It's all separated by categories. You can find a restaurant or store. There are also some virtual events listed. Businesses can also get the word out by visiting the article. It is all online at ksat.com. Your Good. time, oh, I'm sorry. Go ahead. 536 now and it's 67 degrees. Still ahead, the pandemic having a significant impact on places that rely on tourism. More on businesses adapting in one of the state's most beloved towns. And up next, Easter is going to look a whole lot different this year because of social distancing. But despite stay at home orders, some churches are still holding traditional services. Not quite out of the woods yet when it comes to showers and thunderstorms. We'll get an update from Mike Ostrage on this Good Friday. You're watching GMSA. Just about 540. Welcome back on your Friday. Easter Sunday will be very different this year. Despite stay at home orders, some churches are planning traditional services. And that's setting up a new legal battle for some. ABC's Kimberly Brooks has details on that. This weekend, congregations ready to celebrate Easter will have to do the unthinkable, stay home. But to keep serving God and the parishioners, churches are resorting to unorthodox new methods, from drive through confessionals to pastors across the country moving services online. Just have to imagine that the people are out there, and so we do our best to just put forth the same service that we'd always do. It's all to prevent the spread of COVID-19, but not every church is on board. They're trying to take down our great nation by shutting the doors to the church, but we will not let them. In Louisiana, a COVID-19 hotspot, Pastor Tony Spell says the right to assemble is God-given. And even though he's faced charges for defying orders, he continues to hold gatherings. I'm more concerned with not having faith rather than fear. And this morning, a new legal battle in Kansas pitting church versus state. I am not trying to suppress religion. I'm just trying to save Kansans' lives. This week, Governor Laura Kelly issued an executive order restricting the size of religious services. Three of the state's largest virus outbreaks have been linked to church gatherings. But Republican lawmakers overturned that executive order, claiming it impedes on religious rights. They just do not want the government to tell them that they can't participate in a religious function. A shockingly irresponsible decision that will put every Kansas life at risk. The governor now suing to uphold her executive order, taking the issue to the state Supreme Court. 
That was ABC's Kimberly Brooks reporting. Your time now is 541, 67 degrees outside. Up next, if you've ever been to Fredericksburg, you know tourism is one of its biggest draws. How business owners there are adapting to the lack of customers because of stay-at-home orders. Five forty four popular tourist spot Fredericksburg in Gillespie County usually hosts more than a million visitors a year and businesses in town really depend on those tourists. Well, of course, COVID-19 has dealt Fredericksburg a devastating blow. Tiffany Huertas gives us a look at how business owners are adapting. When our phone rings, it's a good day. The owner of the West End Pizza Company in Fredericksburg says while there are only a handful of cars outside her business, it's a good day. The locals are keeping us going and we greatly appreciate it. The coronavirus pandemic has changed the way businesses operate in Fredericksburg. Um, I've laid off 28 people. Um, we are running with um, a group of eight people plus myself. Um, we've reduced hours um, to try to compact the hours um, of operation to reduce our labor costs. Usually this time of year, Janet Degenhardt says the streets are filled with people. It's heartbreaking. Um, I've been in business um, over 11 years and it has never been like this. As companies are forced to change how they work, the Fredericksburg Chamber of Commerce continues to support businesses. On their website, they showcase different programs available and they are updating this list that details the status of local businesses. Our primary focus at the Chamber right now is to drive information to our members. The Chamber of Commerce represents more than 90 members. Our mission is to promote a positive and growing uh, environment for business. So anything that can help business be more profitable or operate more effectively or help businesses to make connections with one another, that all falls into the scope of our work. Chamber President and CEO Penny McBride says they are hosting online events to keep businesses informed. We're doing a event for our members where we're doing having a presentation by the Texas State Demographer, we're doing a presentation on what he expects to see demographic trends changing in Texas over the next few years. As companies adjust to the new reality, Janet believes the small town will be okay. We keep saying there's light at the end of the tunnel. I don't know how long the tunnel is, but we'll, we'll get past it as a company. I reassure my furloughed employees that West End Pizza will survive this and thrive after this. I'm Tiffany Huertas. To see more stories like this, check out KSAT News at 9, Monday through Friday. The coronavirus apparently has more people interested in buying electric vehicles. According to a new survey, there's a connection between travel restrictions because of the pandemic, improvements in air pollution, and people's post-pandemic buying plans. The survey showed that 45% of people said uh, those air improvements would make them reconsider buying an electric vehicle. At the same time, 17% said they've already decided their next vehicle would indeed be electric. With most Americans under shelter at home orders, demand at restaurants have collapsed. And that in turn has drastically cut orders for deliveries from farmers. Around the country, milk is being dumped, eggs thrown out, vegetable fields plowed under. At the same time, Americans seem to be craving comfort food. Sales of things like breakfast cereals, pizza, and junk food have been on the rise in the last several weeks. It, what's sad is you sometimes can't get milk or eggs at the grocery store. How mm -hmm. is that possible? I know it's a double edged sword, isn't it? Yes. And I've seen video of the milk being dumped in fields. I know. It mm -hmm. makes me sad. 547 right now. Whatever, that was, whatever looked, the heck that was. That looked like a comfort food that was yummy. I know it sure did. Let's right. check traffic. Let's do that. Nick, what's happening? But not much. Looks like that accident we had on 16 of Warren 10 is about cleared now. Still have that closure on uh, from 35 southbound I-10 West. So that's still there. Might, you know, I'm thinking they might just keep those cars. Something's there that they, they need to still fix. So that's probably going to be closed for a little while. I can't anticipate when, but I just keep that in mind. All right, drive times. Eastbound Highway 151 from 1604 to 90, only nine minutes. And then eastbound 90 from 1604 to 35, only 11 minutes. So, man, those are great times. Um, Trans Guide, 10 and Frio. Inbounds and outbounds looking really good. Traffic's light, light today. Um, it could be because it is Good Friday as well. Uh, 281 Winding Way, very light traffic. But things are looking good there. So if you are on the way to work, 410 in Fredericksburg, expect a smooth ride because things are going to be looking good for you. All right. Well, remember, we've been talking about this all week. If you're stuck at home, but home isn't safe, you please give us a call. Either call the National Domestic Violence Hotline at 1-800-799-SAFE or call the SAPD non-emergency line 210-207-SAPD. If you feel like a, a family member of yours isn't, is, isn't safe or is in an abusive relationship, um, make sure 
call welfare check on them. As police officers, we signed up for this. We want to help you. We want to help your family members. And right now, when things are at the most str uh, stress of levels and, you know, people are going through financial situations and being at home together, things can get really bad. So we want to help. If you think someone is in danger of abuse or domestic violence, please give us a call. We need to go out there and speak to them. Yeah, you guys can't help if you don't know about it, right? Exactly, exactly. We we have plenty of there's shelters and plenty of programs to Lots help. Lots of resources. Yes, battered women or battered men. Uh, we're here to help. Okay. All right, thank you so and much. And even though you can't go see somebody physically, you can still make sure you keep in contact with them, text and call and everything else. Exactly. Absolutely. You bet. Mm -hmm. Mike, okay. I snuck thank a peek so. at the image behind you here, and it's right out of War of wow. the Worlds, isn't it? I know. That's cool looking because we did have some uh, pretty good storms moved that uh, moved through the area last night. And what's interesting is the airport didn't get a drop of rain. I got some, thankfully, in my backyard. Uh, a lot of folks did pick up some heavier rain and there were some pretty strong storms around the area. A couple of them popped up in the about dinner, late evening uh, dinner time hour out to the west and portions of the hill country and then as expected that moved down to the southeast where there were more stronger storms yesterday and we're not done with the risk for strong to potentially severe storms as of yet. First of all, notice how everything is a lot crisper looking, a lot clearer looking down there at the surface, all the lights out there because the humidity has dropped down substantially. 67 in town, whole lot different than the low 70s we've been seeing. We're still 10 degrees above normal, however. That'll be changing by next week. Just a little hint to come. We've got a couple of uh, leftover showers, some down here in our southwestern counties, and those are sliding off to the east and uh, just to the south of Uvalde, and a couple of them just to the north of Bear County. Just one or two of these uh, little sprinkly showers, and I think that's about the extent of what we're going to be seeing this morning and even this afternoon. This computer model has, again, a few of these showers scattered about the area uh, this morning, and then later on tonight is when there's the chance for more of these storms to get going out here to the west, and that's when we have the threat for some of the uh, stronger to uh, severe storms out in some of our western counties. Different computer model, and jumping ahead then to tomorrow morning, and it has some of these uh, cells definitely kind of developing overnight and working their way through uh, some of uh, the southern part of our area, and then we'll just have a few scattered showers throughout the day. And then tomorrow night, late another line and another round of potentially stronger severe storms moves in here and that's going to be in the overnight hours and early early on Sunday morning then things are going to be clearing out after that so once again storm prediction center does have the marginal risk for severe weather in our western counties later on late tonight and in the overnight hours and then the same thing tomorrow late overnight into early early Sunday morning and this is ramped up a little bit more because we're going to be seeing kind of a warm front move back through the area tomorrow, and that's going to bring more humid air in here, more unstable air, and so that's why it's the uh, slight to enhanced risk for severe storms once again late tomorrow night and then early on Sunday. Then we clear out, and yeah, Easter still looks absolutely fantastic, and we've got a cold front in behind that. 68 degrees today at noon. So even though we're still on the above normal side this morning, I think we dropped down a few degrees and then only come back up into the low 70s later on today. So we will be on the uh, below normal side today with wind out of the north to northeast at about 10 to 15 miles per hour. A shower is possible, although not very likely, and it's going to be a comfortable afternoon. Now tomorrow, going to be more humid, more unstable air moves in, in here. That's why we do have the chance for more severe storms late tomorrow night. 78 degrees, 80 on Sunday. Be a gorgeous day after some morning clouds out there, and then that next big front moves through, and boy, it's going to knock us down to 45 degrees Monday morning, 44 Tuesday morning, and highs only in the low 60s on Monday. It's going to stay on the cooler side, then it looks like a good chunk of next week. Thank you, Mike. Mm -hmm. Right now we're at 553, 67 degrees. Still ahead, how one assisted living facility is pulling out all the stops to entertain its residents during the pandemic, even bringing in a fire twirler. Good morning. Coming up here on a Friday edition of Good Morning America, we dive into the coronavirus pandemic and the numbers now closing in on nearly half a million in the United States. New York State alone with more victims than any other country in the world. New York Governor Andrew Cuomo will join us live this morning here from the epicenter on Good Morning America. KSAT this Sunday, take a look at how Selena and Quintanilla's legacy has continued to grow is deeply rooted right here in the Alamo City. During the hour-long special, we hear from former band members, those who 
followed and knew Selena all too well. We also take a closer look at why she's considered by some to be the most celebrated Mexican-American artist and a cultural icon. For more on her legacy, make sure to watch Siempre Selena right here on KSAT 12 Sunday evening at 9. One assisted living facility up in Wisconsin is heating things up during the pandemic. To keep residents entertained during social distancing, the owner of the facility brought in none other than a fire twirler. Residents got out on their balconies to watch the fiery show. The facility's owner says they are trying to find very creative ways to keep residents from getting bored. Other activities they have planned include chick hatching, a traveling cupcake and ice cream cart, and singing on each floor. Right now, it's a little less than three minutes till six. Still ahead in the next hour of Good Morning San Antonio. You've heard about the freshman 15. Well, what about the COVID-15? Coming up next, how the coronavirus outbreak may cause you to gain weight. We'll tell you how you might be able to avoid it. Transguide right now. We had some problems here in the downtown area a little bit earlier. We'll get updated from Officer Nick Solis. Time saver traffic coming up. An update on your Easter weekend forecast. Stick around. Health officials say social distancing is working, but the president wants to reopen the economy. I'm Nadia Romero in Washington. I'll explain. And a new extension of the stay home work safe order made by the San Antonio City Council will tell you how long it's in effect. And live cam giving us a look outside after those storms. We have cooler weather to start off your Friday on this good Friday. Mike standing by with your Easter forecast. Live from Case at 12. Good morning, San Antonio starts right now. Good morning. It is Friday, April 10th. Thanks for being with us this morning, everybody. Let's get right to Mike and talk about this cooler weather we have this morning. It feels good. Oh, it feels fantastic compared to the past couple of days. You know, it's funny. We're still 10 above normal, but yeah, when we got rid of a lot of the humidity and things makes for that. such a difference. Oh, gosh, it makes a whole bunch of difference. And wait do you see the forecast for next week. Yeah, it's more cooler weather. We're definitely going to be getting it. Uh, the one thing also that you notice is just looking outside the the lights are a lot more crisp looking. It's a lot clearer down there at the surface because of this drier air that's in place. Now we do still have a few uh, light little scattered showers that are moving through the area and we'll continue to keep one or two of them around. A few of them move through northern parts of Bear County and uh, some around New Braunfels. A lot of this is some clutter around the, the radar site, but again, just one or two of them. We're down to 66 now and I think we continue to drop down a few more degrees because we've got wind coming in here out of the north and so all this uh, somewhat cooler air by a degree or two will move down in here and so we'll uh, drop down like I said in low 60s. Oak is on the high side, mold is moderate and a little bit of pecan is showing up right now. Now what's interesting is the Storm Prediction Center once again has our western counties, kind of the western half of our viewing area, under a marginal risk for some strong to severe storms late tonight. There's going to be a few more developing out there to the west moving across the area. So we're not done with our rain chances as of yet. Now this morning I think we dropped down to 62 degrees and then come back up just into about the uh, upper 60s later on at noon. Lots of clouds around here. Wind out of the north, primarily north to northeast, about uh, 10, 15 miles per hour. And then we only top off. Yes, this will definitely be on the cool side. 72 for high temperatures, so well below normal and a nice little uh, breeze out there as well. It can't completely rule out a shower. Although it's uh, not very likely now tomorrow we have once again a better rain chance and the chance for more severe storms We're still looking at a great day on Easter details coming up in a couple of minutes time saver traffic right now and officer Nick Solis and see a spot right there in the center of your map. What's going on? Yeah, the, the closure Mike right there. It's going to be 35 southbound at uh, to 10 westbound. They've had part of this ramp closed off since I've been here. I think it's due to an earlier accident in the day or in the morning. I'm sorry. So hopefully that can get cleared up as, as soon as possible. I don't think it's going to cause too much traffic build up. They do have one lane on the, that ramp open, but that left lane is a right lane. I'm sorry, is blocked off. All right, let's take a look at some drive times. If you're on I-10 westbound from the northwest side of I-35 to 1604, it's 11 minutes. And if you're on 10 eastbound from the northwest side of 1604 to I-35, it's only 12 minutes. That's good. That's like going from the rim down to uh, to uh, IKEA. 12 minutes. That's not bad at all. 
All right, here we go. Trans Guide 410 Westmount at Cherry Ridge. Looking really good right now. Uh, very light traffic. Should be a little lighter today because of the holiday. 410 at Bandera, same. Uh, not too bad there. Traffic's looking good. And 410 in Parambidal on the northeast side is looking really good. Well, like Mike said, still might be a little bit of a uh, chance of rain. Uh, the roadway still may be a little slick. Please be careful going to work. Drive safely. Keep your distance and uh, just make sure you go that speed limit. Mark Leslie, back to you. Thank you, Nick. The number of positive COVID-19 cases keeps rising here, Bear County. Here is a look at the latest numbers. We have a total of 615 COVID-19 cases in Bear County, an increase of 61 since Wednesday. 22 patients have now died, 92 have recovered, and 85 remain in the hospital. More than half of those are hospitalized in intensive care. Now, we know cases involve many members of our community, including an employee with saws. San Antonio Water System says a deep cleaning of the employee's work area was completed and the employee did not have direct contact with customers. Five officers with the San Antonio Police Department and at least four employees with the Bear County Sheriff's Office also tested positive. We also know of five HEB employees who contracted COVID-19. All stores have been disinfected. City Council has approved an extension of the stay home work safe order. It will now run through the end of this month. While there was a majority vote, it was not unanimous. District 7 Councilwoman Ana Sandoval was the only one to vote against the extension. She told reporters afterwards she supports the order, but wanted to draw attention to other issues she thinks need to be considered, like testing. Hopeful signs are emerging despite a surge in virus deaths. New York City is reporting its lowest daily number of hospital admissions so far. But amid the cautious optimism is the stunning new death toll. More than 16,000 Americans have now died, 7,000 of them in New York, more than 1,000 in New Jersey and Michigan. And now states like Texas, with just over 200 deaths, are preparing for a possible surge in cases. ABC's Kenneth Moten has the latest. Mental this morning, President Trump is assuring Americans the curve could be flattening. We're at the top of the hill, pretty sure we're at the top of the hill, and now we're going uh, downward. In some cases, we've already started that process. The message comes as New York State reports a record 799 coronavirus deaths in one day. That is so shocking and painful and breathtaking. I can't, I don't even have the words for it. New York's governor says the hospitalization rate is dropping, but more people in the hospital since earlier in the outbreak are dying. And now new questions are being raised about how and when we can ease social distancing. President Trump says widespread nationwide testing for the virus will not be necessary, something health officials have said is key to reopening the country. Do you need it? No. Is it a nice thing to do? Yes. Uh, we're talking about 325 million people, uh, and that's not going to happen, as you can imagine. And nope, it would never happen with anyone else either. Many Americans are eager to plan summer vacations. Dr. Anthony Fauci is cautiously optimistic. We have to be prepared that when the infections start to rear their heads again, that we have in place a very aggressive an effective way to identify, isolate, contact, trace, and make sure we don't have those spikes that we've seen now. So the answer to your question is yes, if we do the things that we need to do to prevent the resurgence. Experts say life in America won't return to normal until a vaccine is developed, which could be 18 months away. But now Pfizer says it's working on a promising vaccine that could stop the virus from replicating. It could be ready by the end of this year. Kenneth Moten, ABC News, New York. The Federal Reserve is continuing its efforts to prop up the economy in the wake of the coronavirus pandemic. The central bank announced a new $2.3 trillion round of loans that include even more support for small businesses and consumers. The Federal Reserve is creating a municipal liquidity facility with up to $500 billion in loans and $35 billion in credit protection in order to, quote, help state and local governments manage cash flow stresses. Coronavirus has killed at least 16,000 people across America, and more than 1.5 million cases have been documented around the world. Now sources say the White House is looking to launch a new coronavirus task force. CNN's Nadia Romero has the latest on that. Nearly 17 million unemployment claims filed in the last three weeks, and that's why the president says he wants to reopen the economy by May 1st. Now, health officials say that may be too soon, but the president is putting together a coronavirus task force that's specifically aimed at looking at the economy. 
We have things in the works that are going to really, I think, fire the country. President Trump is preparing to announce a second task force focused on economic recovery. There's nothing formal going on. Uh, the president has been talking to his economic advisors. Day by day, deaths in New York continue to rise. Questions? Wednesday's no. numbers report was no different. It's gotten to the point, frankly, that uh, we're gonna, going to bring in additional funeral directors to deal with the uh, number of people who have passed. 97% of the U.S. population is under stay-at-home orders, and nearly 17 million jobless claims have been filed. The country's top officials say pushing pause on life seems to be working to bend the curve of infections. And when it comes to kickstarting life back into action, Fed Chairman Jerome Powell expects a robust economic recovery. We would expect there to be a fairly quick rebound as people do go back to work and start resuming normal levels of economic activity. I think most people expect that to happen in the second half of this year. The president wants to reopen the economy, but health officials warn that social distancing is our best tool to fight the spread of COVID-19. They believe that letting down our guard may cause a second rise of the virus to spread across the country. In Washington, I'm Nadia Romero. Back here at home, Workforce Solutions Alamo announced a new program aimed at helping frontline essential COVID-19 workers. The new program will let them apply for child care assistance. According to a press release, the Texas Workforce Commission authorized the child assistance. To prioritize the funding, the following criteria is what's being considered. Uh, these are the people that can apply. Health care workers, pharmacy, first responders, grocery store workers, infrastructure workers, including restaurants, banks, gas stations, and daycares. UTSA is working to find new ways to combat COVID-19, and that could mean a potential treatment that would reduce symptoms brought on by the virus. This week, the university announced roughly 250 unique compounds developed by chemistry professor Doug Franz and his students are being studied at the University of Texas Medical Branch at Galveston. Two immunosuppressive drugs used to treat and prevent malaria were found in those compounds. But studies have shown it could also reduce the effects of COVID-19. Ron says the goal is to develop a treatment similar to Tamiflu. However, he says research is really in the early stage and it could be five to eight years before people would actually be able to use it. Right now we're at 610, 66 degrees. Does your iPhone facial recognition work? Now that you have a mask on, we have a solution if it doesn't coming up. On KSAT.com, we have the latest on the coronavirus. From the latest cases to tips on how to handle stress the pandemic might be giving you, next on GMSA, Eric Hernandez has a compilation of what you might have missed this week on our website. And live cam giving us a look outside. We have lower humidity and we're in for actually a nice cool down by the beginning of next week. Mike has a look at all the details. KSAT.com has us covered all the latest coronavirus news and other stories related to the pandemic. Our Erica Hernandez gives us a look at what you might have missed on the website this week. Stimulus checks are set to hit bank accounts by the end of this week or early next week. But if you're one of the 10 million people who will get their check by snail mail, you'll probably want to know when it's coming. The U.S. Postal Service is offering a free service called Informed Deliver. You will be emailed a grayscale photo of each letter size piece of mail that will be delivered to your mailbox each day. If you get a picture of an IRS envelope, it's likely your check. KSAT.com has a link on where to sign up. The new coronavirus pandemic has brought about an uneasy shift in our normal lives and can be causing some unwanted stress and anxiety. Psychiatrist Dr. Harry Croft this week offered some tips to help us all out. We have that list up in this article, but overall, he says we should try to focus on the bright side of the situation by making the most of the extra family time we are all getting together. Some of that unwanted stress right now may be caused by not being able to find toilet paper. Where is all the toilet paper and when will it be restocked? The answer? Not that simple. Our RJ Marquez explains that even before the panic buying began, Americans use more toilet paper than any other country, and the massive demand now is making it harder to keep in stock. There is a silver lining. You can read all about it when you click on this article. And finally, Easter is Sunday, and this year the kids won't be able to participate in an egg hunt with other friends and family, but they can take part in a neighborhood egg hunt that is social distancing approved. How it works? 
You color and decorate a printed out egg and then put them up in your windows. You can walk or drive around to hunt for all the eggs you can find. For more on all these stories, just head to our website, ksat.com. Erica Devnandis, KSAT 12 News. Just about 617. Time to check out the roadways on this good Friday. How's it looking, Nick? Roadways are really good. If you have to go to work right now, expect a smooth ride. You, you could even stop and maybe get some food, taco something, because uh, there's no accidents out there right now. A lot of green on the scene, which is always a good sign on a Friday morning, right? We still have that one closure. It's going to be 35 southbound to I-10 westbound. It's one lane on that on-ramp from 35 to 10. Um, not going to affect the commute too much. It looks like uh, because one lane is still open that it should be okay. All right, let's take a look outside. Could still be a little slick out there. Watch your speed. Make sure you drive the speed limit. We want everyone making it safe to work. 10 at the Y, looking good. Uh, 281 at Quarry, looking great. I mean, very little cars on the roadway. And let's see what else we have here. 10 Loop 1604, where we had that accident earlier, is looking good as well. So right now, things are looking great right there at the roadways. Thank you, Nick. We got kind of dark and dreary yesterday. We had those little gust fronts out there moving around late in the day. Yep, some of those bigger storms that developed and they moved through parts of the hill country early enough before the uh, the sun went down. And then this is the picture that was ended up with. Look at oh, the wow, sun that's beautiful. Off those trees in the foreground there. That's absolutely beautiful. Yeah, and some did uh, reach severe levels, especially to the uh, in our south and east counties, as expected. And we're not done with the threat of uh, some strong to severe storms not only later on tonight, but also tomorrow night. More on that in a second. Notice how the lights are much more uh, kind of crisp and clear this morning because the humidity is really, really down. We're at 66 right now, 61 up the road toward Bernie's, 60 in comfort. And I think uh, with the wind coming in here out of the north, it's going to continue to kind of pull down a little bit of this cool air. So we'll drop down a few more degrees in the next couple of hours. And these are the numbers that make all the difference in the world. The dew points have really dropped down. We're right at 60 right now, so on the verge of being humid, but it's a whole lot better. Dew points overall are down about 10 degrees degrees from where they were yesterday and the day before we were so so muggy. We still have a few showers that are showing up on radar right now. Some there in southern uh, Medina County and heading over toward New Valley. Everything's sliding off basically straight to the east and a couple of these uh, little scattered showers. If you're going up 37, you may run into excuse me up 35. You may run into a couple of them. And as far as the humidity now, it's going to be staying fairly comfortable today. It's going to go up a little bit going into tonight, which may actually feed uh, a couple of stronger storms off to the west. And then throughout the day tomorrow, it really starts to pump on in here with these southeasterly winds because a warm front comes back up through the area. And so that's why things really start to destabilize late tomorrow and then especially tomorrow night. And going into the uh, late night hours, we're going to be very warm, very humid, and that's going to be probably the best opportunity to see some strong to severe storms. But that's what's coming off there to the west of us. Much, much drier air and going further into the future. Here's that drop in the dew points and the humidity going into Sunday and Monday and staying on the lower side into next week. So we're going to be staying on the cooler side a good chunk of next week. Here's the uh, rapid update computer model. Doesn't really have much of anything out there. A couple of sprinkly showers. That's going to be it, I think, throughout the day. But then by later on, late this afternoon and tonight, some of those uh, bigger thunderstorm cells are going to try and develop out there to the west. And that's when we have the threat for severe weather out there to the west. And then going into tomorrow morning, those would hold together as far as what some computer models are indicating, work their way across our southern counties tomorrow morning. So it could be a rough start tomorrow morning. We'll still have more showers around throughout the day. And then that next wave of stronger storms comes through late, late tomorrow night, wee hours of the morning Sunday. But by about sunrise, most everything's going to be out of here. And that just leaves us with beautiful weather on Easter. Marginal threat for severe weather out in our western counties late tonight, later on tonight, and then tomorrow, about the same timeline, evening hours, and then going into late tonight, we'll have actually a better shot, according to Storm Prediction Center, uh, the slight to enhanced risk for some severe storms. And that would be into the overnight hours. Like I said, things clear out nicely then by the rest of the day on Easter. 68 at noon today, cloudy, maybe a shower or two, and later on today, that's it. 72 degrees, well below normal. Wind out of the north to northeast, 10 to 15 miles per hour. Again, you can't rule out a shower. And then some of those storms are going to be developing out to the west later on tonight. Tomorrow, we'll have a bit more rain around. And then especially tomorrow night, maybe a couple of more severe storms. Easter Sunday looks beautiful, 80 degrees. Then that next big front moves through here. And wow, put us down to 45 degrees Monday morning. It's going to be kind of breezy on Monday as well. 
you'll need a jacket on Monday Holy and Tuesday. God. That's hard to believe in the middle of April. 92 a couple of days ago and then down in the 40s. We'll so. take it. Here we go. Thank you, Mike. Thanks. Right now we're at 621, 66 degrees. A new Facebook feature that allows you to quiet notifications coming up in on GMSA. Here is your secret Mike, word like a of year the day. Ago when it was uh, 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 KSAT.com slash Circle K for a monthly chance to win free gas for a year. Every entry wins a hot dog or kalachi. We are Circle K. These are real people, not actors, who've got their eczema under control. With less eczema, you can show more skin. So roll up those sleeves and help heal your skin from within with Dupixent. Dupixent is the first treatment of its kind that continuously treats moderate to severe eczema, or atopic dermatitis, even between flare-ups. Dupixent is a biologic and not a cream or steroid. Many people taking Dupixent saw clear or almost clear skin and had significantly less itch. That's a difference you can feel. Don't use if you're allergic to Dupixent. Serious allergic reactions can occur, including anaphylaxis, which is severe. Tell your doctor about new or worsening eye problems, such as eye pain or vision changes or a parasitic infection. If you take asthma medicines, don't change or stop them without talking to your doctor. So help heal your skin from within. And talk to your eczema specialist about to fix it. In this morning's GMA First Look, the do's and don'ts of curbside pickup. For so many Americans, this has become the go-to method for stocking up on groceries and supplies. But there are some helpful strategies you should consider. Would you mind putting in the back for me? Thank you. There are lots of different stores that are doing it now as our entire sort of shopping habits change. Retail outlets and grocery stores are ramping up, order online, then pick up outside the store. Sometimes you need to go to an outside kiosk, but in many cases, you never need to leave your car. Big retail chains like Kohl's, Best Buy, and Michael's have added options, as have local stores and restaurants. Coming up on Good Morning America, we'll give you much more of the expert tips you need to know. With your GMA First Look, I'm Becky Worley, ABC News, Oakland. iPhone users have likely noticed by now the phone's facial recognition will not work while you're wearing a mask. But there's a little known fix. You just have to go under settings, then go to Face ID, and you'll be able to set an alternate appearance. Facebook has announced a new feature that makes it easier for you to manage your time. It's called Quiet Mode. It mutes push notifications from the Facebook app for a set period of time. If you try to open the app while in quiet mode, you will be reminded that you were planning to step away from Facebook. The social media giant also added shortcuts to notification settings and newsfeed preferences so people can prioritize the time they do spend on the app. Right now we're 627, 66 degrees. Does the coronavirus have you eating all those snacks you have at home? And with no gyms open, how do you stay active? Coming up on GMSA, RJ Marquez has tips on how you can avoid gaining weight during the stay home, work safe orders. The vote to extend the eighth of a cent sales tax that funds pre-K for SA has been postponed. We'll tell you when council is moving it to next on GMSA. The federal government is rolling out new measures to help the economy recover from the ongoing coronavirus pandemic. I'm Inez de la in Washington, and I'll have all the details coming up. Outside with live cam with showers and storms in the area late yesterday. Mike was tracking new showers earlier this morning, but it's two hours later. Hey, it's 630 <laughs> on your Friday. It is April 10th. Good Friday. Good Friday, everybody. Thank you so much for being with us. The storms have passed, and while the temperatures aren't that different, as you pointed out, it's a lot cooler, which we'll get to in a minute. Mm -hmm. How are the roadways looking? Uh, they're looking great right now. I can tell you that they, they have not looked this good since Thanksgiving Day. Oh. They look really good. Wow. Yeah, okay. Good. Yeah. They're, That's they're, going back a long time. Yeah, yeah uh, we are a little bit cooler this morning, still above normal, but the humidity has really dropped down, so it's pleasant when you step outside. And it's going to be uh, pretty nice throughout the day. We're going to keep a lot of clouds around, and we are not done yet with the, the chance for strong to potentially severe storms in the next couple of days. First of all, a couple little showers are moving through the area. 
That's about it. Nothing really showing up uh, in and around uh, the San Antonio area right now. 66 degrees here at the airport. Hello to 61 and then 60 in comfort. And I think some of this cooler air, we've been dropping down a couple of degrees in the past few hours, and I think we dropped down a few more degrees in the next uh, couple of hours. Like I said, still on the above normal side, but boy, it's so much more pleasant out there. Oak is on the high side. Mold is moderate. And we do still have the risk for severe storms tonight out in our western counties. And this is going to be late tonight. And then we'll have another threat for severe weather late tomorrow night as well. So like I said, we're not completely done with this as of yet. Only low 70s for a high temperature today. So it's going to be nice. Winds out of the north at about 10 to 15 miles per hour. Maybe a shower or two. Like I said, that's possible. And then that threat for severe weather late tonight out to the west. Now tomorrow, showers and thunderstorms. We'll have some in the morning and then refiring later on. And again, some of those could be on the strong to severe side into the overnight hours after a few more clouds and perhaps a leftover shower early, early Sunday. Easter looks fantastic. Uh, plenty of sunshine out there. Then another front moves through and it's going to be colder next week. Details coming up in just a couple of minutes. And again, time saver traffic. Still got that dot right in the middle of the map. Oh yeah, it won't go away. Yeah, no, it's because they have they have that left lane shut down. So what Mike's talking about here, if you're going 10 or 35 southbound to 10 westbound. They have part of that ramp, that on ramp from 35 southbound where it becomes 10 westbound. They have it shut down, uh, doing some maintenance, con some, some construction there. I think due to an accident earlier in the day. So just keep that in mind if you're heading that way. All right, let's do some drive times here. 35 southbound from the northeast side of 1604 to downtown. You got a 12 minute commute. And if you're 35 northbound from the southwest side of 1604 to downtown, you got a 15 minute commute. Yellow there for a 14 minute commute. Change it on me. So that's not too bad. Really good. All right, Trans Guy 35 and Cesar Chavez. Traffic is flowing very smoothly. A little bit lighter traffic today than usual. 10 at the Y. There is that construction there. 281 at the quarry. Looking really good. Very, very light traffic on the roadway. And 35 and Martin. Look, it looks like we have an accident here. It looks like uh, this may have just popped up. I'll get you some more information on that right now. Um, but please be careful driving to work today. It could be a little slick on the roadways. Mark Leslie, back to you. Thanks, Nick. Later today, Governor Abbott will be having a press conference about the latest on the coronavirus pandemic. The governor will be joined by the Texas Department of State Health Services and the Texas Division of Emergency Management. The press conference will be on the Texas efforts to combat it and scheduled to happen around 2 o'clock at the state capitol in Austin. We will broadcast it on our streaming services webpage and right here on KSAT. We have learned more patients from Southeast Nursing and Rehabilitation Center are being hospitalized due to the coronavirus. It is the same facility where a COVID-19 outbreak took place. Ten residents are now hospitalized, four on ventilators. The death toll from the center remains at 10 this morning. The nursing facility says they still don't know how or when COVID-19 got on their site. They say they are taking measures to care for each person in that facility. In a statement, they say, quote, we are hopeful the situation serves as a cautionary notice to all senior living and rehabilitation centers. COVID-19 is an evil and fast enemy. Be prepared, end quote. HUB's confirmed three additional employees testing positive. This brings the total number to five in San Antonio. The employees worked at three different locations. One employee on WW White was last at the store March 31st. The other April 1st on Nacogdoches and Thousand Oaks. And the third at April 3rd at Bandera and Gilbo. HEB says all employees who had contact with those infected have been notified and all stores continue to be disinfected. Well, there have been a rise, there has been a rise, I should say, in COVID-19 cases in several of our surrounding counties. Let's take a look at the numbers. As of last night, Guadalupe County is reporting 47 cases. Hayes, 77. Kendall County has 10. Comal at 29. DeWitt County reports 8. Bandera County confirms only 1. Several other counties are saying are staying below double digits, including Gillespie County, who has one COVID-19 case. Let's take a look at the latest statewide numbers. There are now more than 10,000 confirmed cases and about 200 deaths in Texas. Across the U.S., 462,000 cases, more than 16,000 deaths. Globally, there are nearly 1.6 million cases and more than 95,000 deaths. In less than a month, San Antonians were set to vote on extending the eighth sales tax that funds pre-K for SA. But now City Council has voted to move the election back to November 3rd, of course, because of the pandemic. The program offers free and reduced-priced pre-kindergarten education in San Antonio. 
Voters will decide whether to fund that program for eight more years. Pre-K for SA CEO Sarah Barry. Barace says that she expects more children will qualify for the program after COVID-19 due to the spike in unemployment. One of the qualifications metrics is income. A staggering number of Americans have lost their jobs due to the outbreak. 6.6 .6 million filing for unemployment last week alone, bringing the three-week total to nearly 17 million. This comes as the federal government has already funneled trillions of dollars into the economy, but more help could be on the way. ABC's Inez de la Cuatera is in Washington with the latest. This morning, scenes like these. Certainly, it is a point that it is so needed that, that this many people did show up. Becoming the new normal for towns and cities across the country. I have never seen this. From California. It really helps a lot. To Texas. I am so thankful. To New York. I'm worried about food, putting food in my mouth. So many Americans struggling to buy food and pay bills as applications for unemployment benefits jump by another 6.6 .6 million, bringing the three week total to nearly 17 million. That's about 11% of the U.S. workforce. We need more funding and we need it fast. President Trump now requesting another $250 billion to help small businesses, but Democrats blocking that measure. They're insisting on another $250 billion for hospitals and states. This was, in fact, designed to fail, designed as a political stunt. Meanwhile, new trouble with the first relief plan as Americans face delays getting their extra $600 per week in unemployment benefits. How long it takes will vary by states. Some systems, some states' systems will take longer. Many state websites crashing because of overwhelming demand. Overnight, President Trump promising more help for farmers, saying the government will use all the funds and authorities at its disposal to make sure our food supply is stable. And college students will also be getting some help. The Department of Education is releasing $6 billion in emergency grants to help students with their debt. And as for those direct relief payments, officials say the first checks are on track to be paid starting next week. In Esdela Deliquatera, ABC News, Washington. New this morning, San Antonio police are looking for suspects after a shooting and a crash on the city's northeast side. It happened in the 8,000 block of Mid-Crown. It was around 10 o'clock last night. Police say they didn't have any reports of someone being hit by bullets. They're investigating what happened. Now, the delay saw an explosion that caused an evacuation in East Bear County last night. The Bear County Fire Marshal's Office investigating after lightning struck a gas line in the area of Highway 87 and Loop 1604. About 100 residents who live in homes within about two miles of the explosion were evacuated until authorities took care of it, which happened around 630 last night. Deputies shut down traffic in the area until the incident uh, during the incident, and it wasn't until after 10 when the lanes were finally reopened. No injuries or deaths have been reported in connection with this incident. Right now we're 639, 66 degrees. You heard about the freshman 15. What about the COVID 15? Coming up next, how the coronavirus outbreak may cause you to gain a little bit of weight and how you can avoid it. Six forty three with stress snacking up and gym workouts down during the outbreak. You might start noticing a midsection bulge that was not there before. Yep. And working from home, add that to it with easy kitchen access in the mix and you may find yourself with a couple of extra pounds. RJ Marquez has what you can do to avoid gaining weight during lockdown. Many people are finding comfort in binging on chunk food during these stressful times, but how can you avoid gaining the COVID 15 pounds? First, stay hydrated. A study out of the University of Michigan found that poor hydration is associated with higher body mass index and filling up on water can prevent overeating. The other thing is to make sure that you're getting good nutrition. Unhealthy junk food may provide comfort, but there are some healthy foods that can as well. Try wild salmon, dark chocolate, and eggs to boost your mood without expanding your waistline. Finally, just because the gym is closed doesn't mean you can't work out. Some gyms are moving to virtual classes, and exercises such as burpees, lunges, and push-ups can help you keep off those pounds without any gym equipment. You know, it, it's never too late to make those changes that are going to keep you healthy. Another tip, control your portion size by eating on a plate instead of straight from the package. RJ Marcus, KSAT 12 News.
Good morning, everyone. Hope you're having a great start to your morning. All right, we have another accident here we're working on. This accident is going to be at South Callahan Road and Enrique and Barrera Parkway. Just came out. It looks like a two vehicle accident. An SAPD just arrived on scene. Hopefully everyone is okay there and they can clear this accident very quickly. All right, another drive time northeast side of 1604 to downtown 12 minutes. And if you're on 35 northbound from the southwest side of 1604 to downtown 12 minutes it was 14 minutes earlier. So that's a little bit of, of an improvement. Okay, 35 and Martin figured out what this was. This is the same um, traffic construction buildup that uh, we, we've been talking about all day. It's handling the Y. So there was an accident involving an 18 wheeler earlier. They're still working on getting that, that the trailer of the 18 wheeler out of the roadway. This is actually the access road if you're trying to get onto 10 westbound from San Saba on that access road. So hopefully they can get that cleared here very, very soon. All right, well, we uh, have been uh, stressing this a little bit here lately at uh, KSAT and SAPD. Domestic violence calls are up about 21% in the city. Very dangerous. People are, you know, very high strung right now and uh, things can be a little rough at home. If you feel like you are in a domestic, uh, you know, abu or abusive relationship, please call these numbers here. If not the National Domestic Violence Hotline, call the SAPD non-emergency line. And if you think it's an emergency, call us anyways. It all goes to the same dispatcher in the same department. We need to help you. We want to help you. We want to make sure you do not feel like a prisoner in your own home. If you need to help, if you need to cry out for help, we are here to help you. That's our job. So please, please be careful out there. And also, if uh, you have an elderly neighbor, you know, I, I say check on them. You know, you can call, call, check on them, knock on the door, your do the phone ding, number. Yeah. Ding dong ditch to the sidewalk. <laughs> Give them yeah. the old wave. That's a good make, idea. Make sure they're OK, because this is really hard for them to right. It's now. tough time. It is. Thank you, Nick. We yeah. appreciate it. Hi, Mike. You know, we, we were talking on SA Live yesterday. And it's like, OK, you know, I had a lot of people in the memes and everything are like, oh, this and that. And it's like, find the positive things coming out of this. You know, being home, a lot of people had to get and spend more quality time, you know, with the kids. Yeah. Yes, you need to take a break every once in a while. <laughs> yeah, yeah, but sometimes. But, but stay, you know, think about that. So just try and find the, the good things coming out of it. So I agree with that, 100%. Yeah. Exactly. All right, um, look at this great picture. I love this one. Butterfly did not move. It's on that beautiful, probably soaking in the colors of that flower there, but didn't move when the thunder was going on, but decided once it stopped, it was safe to travel. Smart butterflies, it says. Thank you very much for the KSAC Connect picture. Uh, the lights are a lot clearer this morning, and that's because we got a lot less humidity out there. Temperatures are much lower than what they have been. You know, the past few days we've been in the kind of low, almost mid 70s, kind of summertime sort of temperatures. Now we're still about 10 degrees above normal, but it feels a lot better because these numbers, dew points, have definitely come down. Remember, these numbers were up in the uh, upper 60s, low 70s yesterday. Now we're not completely done with the humidity as of yet. More on that in a second. We've got a couple of little sprinkly showers that are continuing to move on through, and it looks like one maybe now sliding right through there, 10 near 4, 10, so, or excuse me, 10 near 1604. So the roads could be a little bit on the damp side. So if you are heading out this morning, just watch that. Now, as far as the humidity, it's going to stay okay throughout the day. It may start to come up a little bit uh, as we go into the evening hours, and that could feed some thunderstorms out to the west by later on tonight. And then tomorrow, it is definitely going to be pumping back on in here because we have a, a warm front, which is going to move back on through the area, allow all the humidity to come back in here and destabilize the atmosphere even more. So tomorrow evening, we have a much better chance and then going into the wee hours of Sunday morning of some uh, stronger, potentially severe storms. Then that's what's coming by Sunday. This drier air will move on in here and that's really gonna be pumping on in for the first part of next week. And that's gonna allow temperatures to be definitely cool. So we will go from humid down to actually chilly by the first part of next week. It's kind of Kind of odd to say that when you're getting into the uh, the middle of April. We've got a couple of sprinkly showers around this morning, maybe one or two of them throughout the day here and there. Not a great chance of rain. However, off to the west by later on tonight, computer models want to get a couple of these thunderstorms developing out there. And some of those could because of the return of the humidity and the atmosphere is still unstable. Some could be on the uh, strong side and then those overnight would hold together and work their way through the area tomorrow morning. Get on out of here. We'll have just some scattered rain throughout the afternoon and then more develop and work their way on through in the overnight hours and pretty much get on out of here by early on Sunday morning. And then we have just gorgeous weather after that. So Storm Prediction Center has the marginal risk for a severe storm, basically the western half of our viewing area, and that's pretty much for later on tonight. 
and then timing wise about the same situation tomorrow, although they've upped the chance slight and even enhanced risk for severe storms. That does include San Antonio and the I-35 corridor, and that would be late tomorrow night in the overnight hours into early Sunday morning. Temperatures around the country, I mean, we've got another shot of colder air, which is eventually going to work its way on in here. We still have this low out there to the west of us, still pumping in all the moisture upstairs in the atmosphere, little disturbances. Then as we go into Saturday night and Sunday, we still have, again, the same kind of overall weather pattern, but that's finally going to be changing. Here's the front that moves through Sunday into Monday, and that's going to pull down some cooler air, and this cooler air stays in place for pretty much a good chunk of next week. So it's going to definitely be on the, the cooler side. Uh, below normal readings next week. Today, 68 at noon, so we start off on the warm side of normal, but we're only going to make it up to 72 later on today with plenty of clouds, a peak of sunshine, maybe a shower. I kind of doubt the shower. We'll have a few of them left over this morning, but then there is the chance for storms later on tonight. Now, tomorrow, have uh, storms in the morning and then maybe severe tomorrow night, and that's going to be in the wee hours of Sunday morning. Then we clear out on Sunday for Easter and it looks absolutely beautiful. The front moves on through here. We'll have a low temperature Monday morning of 45 degrees, mid 40s again on Tuesday. Highs only in the low to mid 60s wow. starting off next week. That's going to be a nice treat for us. Oh, wonderful. Thank you, Mike. Mm -hmm. Right now we're at 651, 66 degrees. The pandemic has impacted not only how we get greet people, but also how we eat. So what are restaurants doing to help us keep to help keep us safe from the virus? That's tomorrow on GMSA. Good morning. Coming up here on a Friday edition of Good Morning America, we dive into the coronavirus pandemic and the numbers now closing in on nearly half a million in the United States. New York State alone with more victims than any other country in the world. New York Governor Andrew Cuomo will join us live this morning here from the epicenter on Good Morning America. About five minutes till. Time to check the roadways again on this good Friday, Nick. Yeah, still working with this one accident right here in Rike and Barrera Parkway at South Callahan Road. Uh, it looks like it's uh, auto populated on me. Sorry about that, but just working on that one there. All right, now let's see here. Uh, let's look outside. Things are still looking good. I-35 and Martin, keep that in mind when you head that way. Uh, they still have uh, the uh, entrance a ramp to 10 westbound shut down from the access road at San Saba. We have got a much more pleasant morning. Temperatures are in the uh, 60s right now. A couple of us leftover sprinkly showers are kind of showing up there. And we may have one or two little uh, showers around throughout the day and 65 now. So we have dropped down another degree and we are going to be up to 68 at noon. So I think we drop down a little bit and then come back up 72. That's it for a high temperature today. Wind out of the northeast at 10 to 15 miles per hour. Now we may see a couple of more stronger storms uh, late tonight out to the west. And then tomorrow, the same thing, especially tomorrow evening, will be up to 78 degrees. And then Sunday, after some morning clouds, it is going to be absolutely beautiful out there and much cooler, or do I say colder, tomorrow week, tomorrow, I or next week, I should. that is fantastic. 62 a, for a hot. A blessed weekend. It's football sure weather. Yes. Is. We, we certainly hope you enjoy your Easter weekend with your family. Everybody stay safe. If you're just not waking up, good morning. <laughs> We're back in two hours. GMA is next. See you at night.